trust the American people to understand that it is not weakness but wisdom to talk not just to our friends but to our enemies like Roosevelt did and Kennedy did and Truman did. Welcome back to Harville. Did President Bush inject himself into the presidential campaign today in Israel? And was he out of line for doing a political hit job on Obama from overseas? Kevin James, a radio talk show host for KRLA in Los Angeles. And Mark Green is president of the Air America Radio. Let me go to Kevin first. Who do you think President Bush was talking about today in, in the Knesset? Well, I don't know who he was talking about for sure, Chris, but if he wasn't talking Take about Barack guess. Obama, he should have been talking about okay. Barack Obama. I hope Do you he think was there's any doubt Barack he was? Obama. Was there any doubt he was, though, sir? Not was in my doubt? mind there wasn't. No, not okay, in let, my let, mind. And you think it was a fair shot and to I'm, go overseas and to take a shot politically against a fellow let, American? Let me tell you who should have been overseas. Barack Obama should have been overseas and talking to Israel in the Knesset. Barack Obama is the one whose Israel policies are very questionable. Barack Obama is the one who had Robert Malley, a Middle East foreign policy advisor, who just left the Obama campaign because it was discovered that he was secretly working in, you know, in confidence with Hamas. Barack Obama is the one who is endorsed by Hamas. Barack Obama is the the one who needs to be making good with the people in Israel right now in this election season. His policies why is are Israel, Why question. is Israel uh, now the center of the Republican campaign? What is Israel about here in this presidential campaign? It's why not, the focus it's not on that Israel? This, it's not that they're the center of the screaming? campaign, Chris. It's the 60th. <laughs> it's the, because you always get me excited, Chris. It's because why are you I just so excited listen, about Israel? I had to what, listen what is, to Biden. How did this I had to listen to Biden issue? go on about all this political all No, this I'm just curious. Business. Why are we Why are we launching? Why are, are we turning Israel about, into Hyde Park Corner, Speaker's Corner? Why is Israel we're becoming we're talking the new about podium Israel. for political activity? We're talking about Israel because it's the 60th anniversary of their independence, yeah, and it's where right. President Bush happened to be today, talking about the Knesset when he okay. launched this uh, launched this blurb against Obama. I'm glad he did okay. it. I wish the White House had been a little more forthcoming okay. and saying, "You better believe this is against Obama because his policies are dangerous for this country and they're dangerous for Israel as okay. well." Okay, let's go to Mark Green and talk about the politics of this, not the policy. First of all, why would the President of the United States use a foreign platform in a very tricky situation, politically and geopolitically, to launch what is clearly an attack on a Democratic rival? Uh, Chris, by the way, you also excite me, but I don't yell. I get calmer as, as a result. Uh, what Bush has done is, since they run out of arguments, they engage in analogies. It was bad enough when John McCain use this sleazy guilt by association of Obama and Hamas. Now comes President Bush using guilt by analogy that somehow uh, Obama is Chamberlain and anybody who the Bush people don't like uh, is Hitler. We've seen this before. Ho Chi Minh was Hitler. Ahmadinejad John is Hitler. Obama, is, um, uh, Osama bin Laden is Hitler. And now uh, Hussein was Hitler. Look, Hitler was Hitler. And I wish the Republicans would argue on the merits and not engage in McCarthyite guilt by association or analogy. They're doing it to, because their candidate is weak. Obama uh, <clears throat> is strong with uh, a lot of Americans, and the Jewish community has overwhelmingly voted for Democrats in the past. Today, I'd like to tell Kevin, notwithstanding yeah, his attack, let me finish, about, Kevin. Yeah, one, Democrats. One sentence, and one the sentence. Democrats they voted for is one Hillary Rodham Clinton. Uh, very, That's who they voted for, not Obama. A very small sentence. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Congressman Berman and Waxman in California, two of the leading Jewish and pro-Israel congressmen endorsed effusively Obama. I trust them more than you. Well, okay, let me ask you, Kevin, I want to do a little uh, history check on you because the president's referring to history. Uh, he attacked uh, uh, those who would imitate uh, Senator William Bohr of Idaho, who was a Republican isolationist back in the late 30s who supported whatever some notion of getting along with Hitler better. Let me ask you, what did William, uh, Chamberlain do wrong, Neville Chamberlain do wrong in 1939? What, uh, what did oh, he do wrong? It all, goes, it all goes back to appeasement. No, what did he do? Key, well, tell me what he did. It's the key term. It's you the key have to term, answer this Chris. question. He goes, what no, did he, he do? Goes, it's the same thing. It, it puts it all... It's, well, it's tell me what he did. about appeasement. And, what and did Chamberlain his, do wrong? His, what actions, did, his actions enabled, what did Chamberlain energized, do? legitimized... No, I want you to... It's the exact same... I'm not going to continue with this thing, interview Chris, unless you answer what, what that thing is. What it, did it, Chamberlain the, do in 39? Tell me. It, Chris, it's the exact same thing. All what right? did he do? Uh, in, no. What did he do? It, what, 38, 39, Chris? What year what do you want? Do? It doesn't, it's the exact ask, same thing what that you, happened, Chris. What did he's Chamberlain... Talking, he's, talking, he's talking about appeasement. 
All right. What did Chamberlain Chris. do? Just tell me what he did, Kevin. What did Chamberlain he, do you didn't like? Look. Uh, what did he Cham- do? What Chamberlain did, what Chamberlain did that I, what, what the president was talking about? You just said no, the dude, president what? was talking about, you just said the president was talking about Barack. Look, the, I don't no, even, I want I, you I don't to tell me, mister, this. you're making a reference to the days before our involvement in World War II, when the war in Europe began. I want you to I, tell me no, now, I, as an I, expert, I what did Chamberlain do Bush, wrong? Look, you're not going to box me in here, Chris. President Bush was making that. I'm glad, you I'm glad the president... You don't know, do you? You I'm don't glad know that what, what Neville course, Chamberlain did with Neville Chamberlain, you. yeah, he, he was an appeaser, Chris. He <laughs> was an appeaser, and it energized, Kevin, and it legitimized. Kevin James, it, Kevin James it, what did it Neville Chamberlain do? Chris, may I, it, may I try it, to answer? He doesn't know. Chris, you can I answer? You are BSing me. You are talking it, about a very critical point in American history, oh, European history, and you can't tell me what Neville Chamberlain did at, at Munich. I, what did he Chris, do in 39, Chris, 38? Chris. I wasn't the one that raised the Hitler comment. My point is, uh, my point is, what President Bush has done as he has taken this shot across you the bow. You don't know what you're right? talking it's about, a shot. Kevin. No, what you do you mean? I don't know what I'm talking, talking about. about. Tell me what Chamberlain did wrong. Neville Chamberlain was an appeaser, Chris. What right. did Neville he do? Chamberlain, Neville Chamberlain was, a, was an appeaser. All right. What did he do? Uh, Neville, Neville Chamberlain, his the, his policies, the things that Neville Chamberlain supported, Just all right, tell energized, me what he did. legitimized, uh. and energized, legitimized, and and made it easier for Hitler to advance in the ways that he advanced. What? And, okay. You know, and right. I'm sitting here for five minutes asking you to say what the president was referring to in 1938 at Munich. I don't what know did Neville what the, you don't Chris, know. Thank you, Chris. I Here's don't what know what the president. Chris, I don't know what the you. president was referring. Out here. To when uh, when he talked about what was being said in 1930 and 1939. Your problem, Kevin, is you don't know what you're talking about. And the problem is you don't understand there's a difference between talking to the enemy and appeasing. What Neville Chamberlain did wrong, most people would say, is not talking to Hitler, but giving him half of Czechoslovakia in 38. That's what he did wrong. Not but talking the, to somebody. Chris, Appeasement the pro- but is there's giving a away things there's to a the enemy. But Chris, you don't know there's a difference oh, between... Go. i got to go to somebody who knows some history. Mark there, Green, help him out with some Chris, history here. Uh, there's, there's, uh, there's by the way, this Chris, is pathetic. Uh, Kevin, please. This is pathetic. He doesn't even know what Chamberlain did in Munich. Kevin, when you're in a hole, stop digging. Chris, uh, the reason that you exposed him... I mean, he's him, as bad as the, the White that, House press secretary that doesn't even know what the Cuban Missile Crisis correct, the was. You We're talking him, with people with blank slates what, what, in terms of what history President here. Bush and, and Kevin Chris, apparently minute, are interested in... Minute, is, excuse me. Uh, what they're interested in uh, is rhetoric uh, and not reality. They're interested in loaded words for political slander. Uh, Yitzhak Rabin, the former general and prime minister of Israel, who understands terrorism and war better than President Bush, famously said you have to negotiate not only with your friends but especially with your right. enemies so israel did negotiate not appease negotiate with a former enemy egypt successfully former enemy jordan successfully now they're negotiating with syria on the golan kevin diplomacy and common security in a world of terrorism proliferation and pollution is not a four-letter word it's called diplomacy and the next president will do it rather than militarism first it'll be talk first it, you okay. can't, but, but, but you can't talk uh, w- without talking through strength. All right. What happened right. to us in 9/11 is because all Bill Clinton did for years was talk while we were attacked over and right. over and all over right, again. All right. All right. We were attacked in in '93. We were attacked in the coal. We were attacked in the mm-hmm. w- with our with our foreign embassies. And what happened? We ended up with 9/11. All right. And what what's concerned? The, the, the world is concerned Read about what Richard George Bush. Clark's book because for nine months the president at 9/11 was not Clinton. It was Bush, and they did nothing despite all the entreaties mm-hmm. of the Clinton Watch. people. Pathway to 9/11, Mark. Watch wasn't pathway wasn't to 9/11. Wasn't the USS Cole under, and you under look, Bush? I mean, I don't know what we're talking about here. The years, Kevin, the opportunities the that Clinton. Uh, I'm talking about the difference. I'm talking about the difference between okay, we're not between getting anywhere just here. appeasing Kevin, and the Kevin, difference of talking through strength. Kevin, when you're going to yeah. make a direct historic reference, get it straight. Thank you, Kevin James. I didn't Mark make Green, a direct historic reference. You were trying to defend something you don't know what you're talking about. Up next, no, what's no, Jay Leno got? It's not true. You don't understand what appeasement is. Don't use the word. It's giving away things to the enemy, not talking to the enemy.